Okay, I've got a new battery for the GoPro and today's project, which I really hadn't intended on doing, but uh, had a dead battery in the bike and uh, also the uh, starter solenoid started clicking again. Uh, replaced the battery and had a funny feeling that the uh, clicking noise was not going to go away. Uh, I cleaned the points up internally in the solenoid on the starter and uh, that was quite a while ago and this bike has a hundred and thirteen thousand miles on it so it's a lot of starts and I ordered a new uh, complete kit for the starter solenoid uh, after I got the new well I got the new battery and ordered that at the same time I knew I had to do it so what I'm going to do is try to do this as short as possible I've been accused of uh, taking too much time and, and yammering too much which I agree with and uh, you know some people said it was very slow moving so I'm going to try to do this in a little bit quicker fashion and uh, go from there so okay first thing we're going to do here is we're going to disconnect this battery which on some of these uh, can be a real pain in the nuts you know trying to get past the wiring get your fingers in there but you got to disconnect it and I usually put a rag around these so that if they float around, they don't touch. Anyway, um, and by the way, I might mention that uh, this job is basically the same uh, for the Evos from 84, 85, I believe, that had the Denso starter. I'm not sure about that, but if you got a Denso starter, it's uh, about the same job. So um, I think they went over to a different setup as far as releasing it in maybe 2007 I'm not sure uh, look look it up but this is a 1999 bike so it's gonna encompass uh, you know quite a few years before and after anyway I'm gonna get to work and uh, disconnect this battery and then we'll go and taking the primary cover off and I'll show you why we have to do that and just in case you're wondering right here is the starter this is the starter that's nicely wedged in there so that is what we'll be taking out all right on my model and most electro glides you're going to have to remove the rear floorboard and the front floorboard uh, the rear one you got to remove so you can get the primary cover to clear the um, clutch basket and the uh, front floorboard uh, you need to at least get the front bracket out of the way uh, to get at this one bolt now when you take this apart pay attention to you have different length uh, bolts here and you'll see that most of these in the front are going to be the same size and then you got longer one short long oops okay need to loosen that a little bit more long long and this should be a short one if I remember correctly, but I don't. No, nope, it's a long. Alright. So, now you just want to gingerly weasel that past your shift lever. And what I do is I put down an old cookie sheet, or a, you know, one of them oven pans underneath there. Because that is a large area uh, that's going to be dripping oil. Now I'm not going to be touching the gasket at all. Most of these are reusable. So, uh, as long as none of the gasket material came off on the primary itself, uh, you're in good shape. Now, if you pull it off and part of the gasket is stuck to the inner primary cover, well, you're probably going to need a new one. But these are made of that Teflon type uh, graphite material. So, uh, really, they should be reusable for uh, several times taking it on and off. Not that you have to take it off. Uh, now is also a good time to check your tensioner shoe uh, to see if there's a, a lot of wear on it. This is a nylon tensioner shoe that keeps the tension on the primary chain. Uh, 
This, by the way, is the alternator. Here's the clutch basket. And up here, you'll see this is your Bendix drive. This is the drive that uh, has a, a bolt on it and a lock washer. Now, if you can get a new lock washer, go ahead and get one. Other than that, just be careful uh, bending this back. Now, I might be in trouble with this one because I know I've done this job before, a long time ago, and I'm not sure if I got a new one or not. So, uh, if I do, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold part of this over to make it work. But there is a detent here, and I'm going to take that apart now to release the Bendix drive from the starter. And you might want to check your ring gear as well. Make sure that the teeth are good, they're nice and square, that nothing's been slipping or grinding on it, and uh, you know, you might as well take a look at everything while you have this cover off. Alright, I'm going to continue on. Okay, as you can see, this bolt has a thrust washer behind it, a locking tab that will fit in only one way and this holds it tight. Now there is a torque spec for this and we'll get at it later on. Now the Bendix is loose from the plunger of the starter and um, yeah you can take it off if you like. Um, the other thing I might mention is that uh, you do have to hold this gear with something because it will spin so what I do is I, I take a pair of channel locks um, like this in the locking position and I just grab the gear to undo this bolt and the same will occur when I do the uh, tightening so because you're turning the starter so that's where we go for for that and uh, now we move over to the other side and start loosening things there. Okay, on this side, what we're going to do, we're going to unplug our neutral safety switch, or a neutral uh, indicator switch. Uh, take both of those terminal out of the way because we're going to need to get at that Allen head right back in there. And uh, unplug the 12 volt actuator from the relay. Just push down on that little tab and that'll come loose. And then the hot cable, the main hot wire, is going to be a half inch drive. And then the other Allen is back there with a um, um, ground cable on it. <laughs> uh, Anyway, all right, so I'm going to get on that and then uh, we'll start pulling it out. Also, uh, this has a bracket on the Electroglide to support the rear exhaust pipe manifold. So, a uh, half inch up here, and that's the stud, so it's not going to turn on the other side, or at least on mine it is. Um, that bracket will have to come out of the way so the starter can come out of the housing. His starter is out. Note here that if you have a chrome cover on the end of your starter, you'll have to take that out so it clears the side of the uh, casing here. So you can pull it out. Also, you will have a jack shaft adapter. The, uh, be aware of the orientation. The deep side goes towards the starter, and you want to put that in there first. Uh, so when you put the starter back in, it'll be a lot easier to get in because that does kind of interfere because it, it wants to come out halfway and everything. Other thing is, get a 3 three eighths inch drive, one of these with the chamfered edges. That way when you have a socket on it, oh, come here, you, you can, god damn it, <laughs> you can get in to the Allen's without interfering with the switch because the front one is not a straight shot, uh, the back one is a relatively straight shot, and then also you want to get uh, one of these ball Allen 
long ball allens and then once you've broken them loose with the other one, standard allen, you can take this ball allen and run them out. And actually with the ball allen you can kind of put them in too because the torque isn't very high but uh, I, I tend to use the standard straight one. So now we're going to go to the workbench, we're going to make uh, a solenoid rebuild here with all the uh, fixings. This is the starter rebuild kit. I got this on eBay. It mentioned that it was a for the Electroglide Harley. And uh, basically this starter is the same as an automotive starter, the Nip and Denso. Um, this kit comes with multiple contacts, more than the starter will take. It only takes two contacts. So this is a multi-fit. Uh, this is usually what pits very bad and also these contacts in it. Uh, the starter itself is pretty bulletproof. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove this cover and then continue on and I'll try to show you what's internal. Alright, taking the cover off is no big deal. It's just three little screws that go in there. Just take them off. The size is a 932nd, and then you get in there, and this is the internal. It's the plunger with a spring. Come here. Okay. And as you can see, the contacts are very burned, very uh, pitted, and you, you know, if this is so much work that taking it apart doesn't help to sand it down. This is what I did last time. I just sanded that all down. And you can see the powder burns on it and everything else. And these are the two contacts internally that are going to be replaced. So what we're going to do here is, and as I can see, we've already got a problem. We've got this one being the correct contact and well this one's this one. okay good so we do have the right components here I was looking at the other two that do not match what we have so what we want to do is we want to remove these bolts from the outside which are 9 16 and whoops that's not a 9 16 This is a 9 16 You want to get a shallow socket or something to get in there. And this one isn't holding on. Alright, I'm going to have to get a different wrench on that. Let me get a 9 16 open end. Got it. The, uh, if you have a very thin walled socket, it might fit in there, but all you're doing is taking that nut off. By the way, these flank drive wrenches from Snap-on uh, are a non-slip wrench. They've got grooves in them, and uh, they will hold on to a nut or bolt tighter than any open-end wrench ever. Uh, these are great. If you, if you ever have a chance to buy them and you're in the business, uh, these are great to have. So. All we're going to do is we're going to remove that outer nut. Now the nuts they give you with this thing are going to be shouldered and everything. Uh, you can't use them on this bike. You want to take the insulator off. There's a washer in there. You want to reuse that. And then there's an O-ring here. Now the kit comes with a new O-ring so you want to replace those. And then all you're going to do is push this down until it oops yeah see this is the problem things get so burned up after a while you got, might want to hold this with a wrench and then give it a tap with a hammer which is what I'm going to do but as you can see we're going to take this side out and we're going to do the same with the other side put our new contacts in give that a good blowout and then we'll put it back together again Okay, we've done, whoops, we've done the one side, and now this is an automotive kit. Uh, it has 
the bolts, new bolts with it, but they are not the proper size. They're too long. One is too long and the other one doesn't have the ribs on it. As you can see, one has ribs for a station. So, uh, I reuse that and that's not a problem, but everything else I used uh, the new parts. I used the new insulator, the new uh, top insulator. The O-rings didn't fit very well either, so I reused the old ones of those. Now, on this side, you'll notice that it's under a cover, and this is usually on the downside of the starter when it's on the bike. And if you'll notice all that corrosion on there, that white stuff, that's all corrosion. And it's even on the nut that you can see it on my finger. So what needs to happen here is this needs to be cleaned up very, very clean. And then when putting it back together again, my God, that's a lot of corrosion. Um, when it goes back together again, put dielectric grease on this, a good heap and helping of it. And that'll keep the corrosion at bay for a lot longer. But right now this needs to be hit with the wire wheel and cleaned up and also with a bolt and then we'll replace the other contact and that will be the solenoid rebuild now this is shiny clean everything's been cleaned off on that the original nut has been cleaned as best as possible except for inside threads a little bit. I've gotten the contact in and by the way uh, you want to hold the inside of the contact uh, nut or bolt rather with a wrench that way this doesn't cock at an angle. You want this and this contact relatively flat and you can see that from the side so that all gives you where you need to go and if you have to do it a little bit you can move this just a scotch if you think it's a little off hard to tell but you want a flat contact surface so now that that's done we use a dielectric grease as a silicone dielectric compound it's for electrical I have some Motocraft stuff and what I'm going to do is I'm going to liberally coat this nut here and the threads. I'm going to coat this piece liberally as well. Let's get a little bit more of that. Put some on this side. Just give it a really good coating. If you have good dielectric grease it should stick very very nicely. Then you want to put that over back onto the stud. You want to take the original nut and push a little bit of dielectric grease even into the threads. That way hopefully it'll not build more corrosion from the corrosion area that you couldn't clean out and just put it on everything and tighten that up of course you want to be careful that you when you tighten this that you don't spin the whole inside of it so Again, you can take this uh, 13 millimeter wrench, hold that nut on the inside, and then tighten this. Even though the lock nut is already there, you want to make sure everything is tight. And I'm holding my finger on the wire too, so that the nut doesn't start to spin it. Good crank like that. So, there it is. There's some more dialectic that got pushed out. Just rub it all over the damn place. It's not going to hurt anything, but it will keep the corrosion from reoccurring. And then just take your uh, your rubber, yeah, if I can get to it. Now, see there now, I squeezed it in between the two pieces, which, good grief. 
And this is something always to be careful of. I've just got my finger on the inside trying to feel if it's moving, and it is not moving. So loosen that. Make sure your rubber is now out of there. Okay. Now it's out of the clamping force. It's a little fidgety, but it's not not the end of the world by any means. And a little bit of patience goes a long way with this type of work. There. Okay, now I want to check if we're still flat. We are. Nothing's really moved. And remember this wire goes up under here too. So be careful of that. Don't mess around with these hard copper wires too much. This side doesn't make actual contact there. And then all you want to do is take your plunger and, okay, I got to blow this out, but you're going to take the plunger and you're just going to stick it back in there, make sure your spring goes in, and it seems to make a very good contact on both sides looking at it. Now what you can do after you've gotten this together, and don't forget to put your new gasket onto the cover, but you can hook a, a ground cable up to the starter motor on a bare spot like up here just hook a uh, j like jumper cables and then hit this with a positive of course hook the other side to a 12 volt battery and it'll kick and then the starter will run so you know you've done the job instead of going through all the work of putting it on the bike and then finding out that something isn't working right anyway that's it uh, that's, uh, you know, the replacement of the starter into the bike is the reverse order of what we already went through. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a tight fit. It's, uh, you know, especially on the dual piped Electroglide. If you have uh, single mufflers uh, instead of the, uh, you know, crossover pipe in the back, it might be a little bit easier, but uh, it's still a fidgety job all the way out. Don't uh, don't force anything. So that's it. That's uh, a Harley Davidson 1999 starter solenoid rebuild, and this should last me another 10-15 uh, years. So I hope. <laughs> all right. Goodbye.